great earthquakes they occur on uh, plate boundaries so that means uh, you know the earth surface is uh, comprises various plates which are constantly in motion and uh, it is these plates when they interact when they generally when they collide the they produce lot of stress at the boundaries and this is when great earthquakes occur so essentially more than 90% of earthquakes are all taking place on the boundaries between plates so we need to understand that distinction between a plate boundary and a plate interior so there are many regions which are within the plate which are not as hazardous so you don't expect very big earthquakes in the interiors of the plates although you you can expect earthquakes from time to time now for example the turkey earthquake it was distinctly on boundary of not just two plates but there you had two or three plates like you had the african plate you had the uh, eurasian plate and you had the arabian plate there is also a small uh, plate called the anatolia plate so when so many plates are colliding and interacting the stress that is generated on the boundaries is responsible for generating such big earthquakes now coming to india the indian region has plate boundaries all along the himalayan belt and the other boundaries on the eastern side so the north eastern states then what is we call the burmese arc and finally the andaman islands so these comprise the major plate boundaries of india so i am speaking on the north and on the eastern side which are capable of generating really big earthquakes uh, which we call great earthquakes that is more than magnitude 8 in the past we have already seen several uh, great earthquakes happening along these boundaries so it's not something new that we are talking about and since the plates are they continue to move for example the indian plate is moving at the rate of about 5 cm per year going beneath the himalayas so this movement constantly produces stress and the accumulation of this stress all along the himalaya that is what uh, leads to the possibility of a great earthquake now if you look at himalaya from jammu kashmir to arunachal in the east we had already f- four great earthquakes uh, 1897 we had in shillong and then on the western side we had uh, the himachal earthquake in kangra then 1934 uh, bihar nepal border earthquake and 1950 assam earthquake so after 1950 there was no great earthquake in himalaya which is what leads us to believe that the stress that is accumulating in the himalaya has to be released in the form of a great earthquake somewhere along the entire stretch now if you come to the western side where you have uh, the uttarakhand and uh, western nepal area this region is referred as a seismic gap and the reason is that between 1905 and 1934 you had these two great earthquakes and this is the portion in between which remains stressed without any release as great earthquake of course we had smaller earthquakes many of them but calculations show that the amount of energy that is accumulated because of this plate motion it can be released only in the form of large or great earthquakes from time to time so based on these calculations there have been many studies by several uh, scientists worldwide which uh, clearly shows that this region which is referred as a seismic gap between uh, i would say the himachal and the western part of nepal so this entire area which includes uttarakhand this region is prone to a great earthquake which may occur any time unfortunately our uh, research is not capable of giving the exact date and time but roughly we can uh indicate the region which is getting stressed and which is likely to uh, release in the form of a great earthquake so at the at present the most probable candidate in the entire himalayan front would be the uttarakhand region and the uh, nepal region which are yet to have a great earthquake in more than 100 years basically the damage uh, due to a great earthquake that depends on various factors so it's uh, so one cannot very precisely mention about that uh, for example the depth of the earthquake is an important factor like in the case of turkey it was a shallow earthquake 
something like 18 kilometers. So in our terminology, 18 kilometers is very shallow. And then, uh, of course, there were uh, issues with the quality of the building constructions and things like that, and uh, population density and so on. So there are many factors which uh, would decide. And of course, the local uh, uh, geology, the kind of the soil that exists. There are many factors which would decide on the damage pattern. Now, coming to our uh, studies, uh, uh, what NGRA has been doing for several years now is we have a strong network of seismograph stations you know, all, all in the entire uh, Uttarakhand state, about 80 seismic stations, which have been monitoring all kinds of ground movements in that area, particularly earthquakes. And of late, we are also looking at uh, landslides. So these stations are connected to our uh, headquarters in Hyderabad by real time uh, through modems and uh, we get data uh, in real time. And these data are analyzed to study the disturbances that are happening, especially the earthquakes that are taking place time to time. So we study, we do a lot of study on these earthquakes. So that tells us uh, about the, the characteristics of this the sources of these earthquakes, what kind of sources, what kind of faulting is going on, at what depth and so on. And then we also try to study the structure of the soil in that region. So, for example, uh, in, uh, the, in earthquake hazards, there are many aspects which uh, is, are not well understood. So there is something called site amplification, for example. Now, when you have loose soil cover in any area, then the seismic waves, they tend to get amplified. So then what happens is even for a smaller earthquake, the effect will be much larger because the wave, it can become double or triple in amplification. So this is called site amplification and this occurs at some specific frequencies. So people need to understand that in different areas, what kind of amplification is expected mm. and at what frequencies would this amplification occur. And the, uh, the buildings and the frequencies have a correspondence. So, for example, the natural frequency of a building, if that tallies with the predominant frequency of amplification, then there is a problem because then that resonates. And due to resonance, the buildings are more severely damaged. Mm -hmm. So, it is very important to understand the site amplification characteristics in different parts of Himalaya, for example, and uh, to make sure that the buildings do not coincide with the predominant frequency of amplification in that area. So these kind of studies are being done very widely and I believe that these results should be used particularly in um, construction of buildings to make sure that uh, you are uh, you are not uh, allowing site amplification to be a major cause of damage because even for small earthquake it is possible to have more uh, amplification. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there is something called liquefaction where uh, due to ground shaking the uh, the top soil in the of the earth it suddenly loses uh, rigidity and starts mov moving like fluid it's almost like fluid mm. in that situation the buildings can simply sink or uh, just fall down because the rigidity is gone so we also need to understand the liquefaction potential in different parts of himalaya and uh, take precautions accordingly although a lot of research is going on with regard to earthquake prediction. But uh, so far, no reliable and consistent method could be evolved so far. And this is the situation worldwide. I mean, most scientists in the world are looking forward to this kind of a development. And I hope in future there will be some success. But as of now, we can only point out to the most potential zones where a great earthquake is likely to happen. But to pinpoint the date and time is, uh, I think it's still a, a, a very difficult task. So even though people try to make predictions, I wouldn't uh, rely on what they say because uh, even the best of seismologists uh, do not have the technology or the means to be able to predict exactly the date of occurrence and date and time of occurrence.